Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on um, specifically how to master running naked JavaScript files, multiple naked JavaScript files from the same REPL. But I'd like to put that in context a little bit before I start the actual explanation. Um, this week in, in our practice is a fairly ambitious week. Uh, there are several things going on. And, um, and yet, I think if you take them incrementally and do the tasks in the order of set them, um, and pay attention to where your learning for each task comes from, it's going to go well. It usually does for people. Um, but let's just put this in context a little bit. Uh, I have in the slides a fair amount of information about a new way I want you to organize your code so you can really control and understand its order of ex execution. I'm going to leave the explanation for that to the slides. Um, you're going to get a lot of practice with functions um, in various forms this week, and um, that's going to come out of the exercises that I'm setting that aren't from the book um, primarily, and then and then also the book exercise. The book content this week um, adds arrays to the list of types we can work with, and um, and gives you a real good exercise on that that you're going to have to allocate plenty of time for. Um, but it has gone well for people in the past, so I think it'll go well for you. What this video is going to demo is this business of being able to run multiple files from the same REPL. And before you can understand how to do that, I think it's, it's important to go back and look at what we've been doing so far. So um, my cat Winston has generously um, contributed his REPL account again. So I just want to look at a couple of um, projects that he's got in his account. Um, this one is a, is a partially complete uh, mystery picture from mm -hmm. last week. And I just want to point out that when we have an HTML, CSS, JavaScript project and we hit the run button, a few complicated things happen. Okay. Um, first of all, the preview frame is used. And so we can see the output over here on the right. But what's a little, what's implicit, um, and we just haven't talked about before, is that what gets run is this HTML page. And we've been able to use multiple versions of the JavaScript, but how we do that is that the HTML can only run one of them at a time. So if we change this to zero, we run a different JavaScript, we use a different JavaScript, but we're still only executing the code in index.html. And just for Winston's sake, I'm gonna change this back to the way it was, make sure I didn't screw that up because you can never test too much. And, um, and so we have worked with multiple JavaScript files in the past, but we've always been in an environment where the HTML controlled which one happened when we were using the run button. Now, this is um, some version of the kata. Yeah, I don't think this is, no, this isn't a solution of function kata one from last year, but it is a running version of it. And so this is a naked JavaScript, um, a node JavaScript project. And if I run it, in this case, nothing happens because we introduced this convention last week where we have a run function. And until you come over here, so, the run button only loads the code into this console and makes it available. And if you, in order to see anything happen, you have to type the run command over here. Now, the other way to get the code to execute when you hit the run button is you put this run command at the bottom of the JavaScript. So we are packaging all the code that's going to be executed up into a run function. And then the last line in our JavaScript file is a line that executes that function. So if I clear this and I simply hit the run button, okay, that code runs. But what I'd like to point out is this run button only ever executes a file called index.js. If I were able to change this name and I'm not sure REPL would even let me, then the run button wouldn't work at all. And what we want to be able to do this week is have multiple different JavaScript files and be able to get each of them to execute um, when, when we want to test that code. So again, I'm going to take this out just to not mess up 
Winston, make sure it's doing nothing, always good to test, and go back to the slides here. Okay, so we're gonna look at this and where you first encountered this in the slides is, Let's see, where do we want to explain this first? Looking for the assignment overview. Here we go. Okay, so how this is going to come into your life in terms of actually completing your coding assignments this week is that task one and task two are really closely related. And, and therefore, I'm asking you to code the JavaScript for those two tasks in the same REPL and be able to flip back and forth to test them and look at them. Just having those two files together in one REPL, I think makes it much more convenient to compare and contrast that code. In task three, I'm pretty sure I'm giving you the option of whether you're going to um, fork REPLs or simply copy files and run um, multiple JavaScript files from the same REPL. I'd like to see if after doing one and two, um, which, which you prefer. Um, you may not prefer the new way yet. And then in task four, you definitely have to go the, to the new way. Um, the first version of the task four code uses the books code only, and that doesn't use our new run convention. But then I'm going to ask you in that same REPL to create a run controlled version of that code. And you have to be able to flip back and forth and run both of those. So let's just talk about how that, that's done. Um, let's take a look at slide 15. I made a note for myself. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to, when you start on task one, you're going to start with some a working replit project that you're going to add JavaScript files to. So let me go ahead and click on that. Okay, we get the standard, um, we get the standard starting um, forking screen. So um, Winston's gonna fork that and end up with his own version of it. Okay, and um, I just wanna go back and demo what I was talking about before. If I, I've got three JavaScript files here, okay, a longer one with some directions, and, and two short ones. And if I hit run, the only one that gets run is this index.js with the instructions in it. And um, one of the reasons that I've given you this as a starter is that uh, I certainly do this, and I assume you're a human being also, because you're hitting run so much of the time in your replica practice, um, I find that even though I know I have to execute my new code in a different way, I keep hitting this run button. And rather than it have do nothing or give you an error message. What it does is every time you mistakenly hit the run button, you get these um, clues. Now, this used to be um, running multiple copy, multiple versions of JavaScript in the same REPL it used to be a lot harder. It had some obscure ways to get to where we're going now. But REPL has um, really improved this in the last year or so because they now have the console tag where this output comes out, okay? And they also have the shell, okay? And um, the shell is actually a Linux command line. What's completely hidden under the hood, and we aren't gonna talk about it, but once or twice, is that um, when you have a REPL project, what you have is a little virtual Linux machine up in the cloud. And most people who take this class don't run Linux on a regular basis. Um, it's gotten to be a much more user-friendly operating system, but still most of my students are either Windows users or Mac users um, and some Chromebook users, which is kind of sort of Linux under the hood. Um, in any case, almost nobody anymore spends much time at the command line until you get to coding classes. And um, that's kind of a shame, but hey, it's the way the world is right now. So the command line Linux, Mac, OS is probably unfamiliar to the majority of you, and that's just fine. Um, I'm going to teach you three commands today, and only one of them do you have to use on a regular basis. 
So um, again, if you hit the run command, if you hit the run button, you get output in this console tab. To, to work in the shell, you have to click the shell tab. And once you're here, you just have to trust me that this is a Linux command line. And one of the things, um, really basic commands that can happen in a Linux command line is dir for directory. And you use that to see sort of where you are in the file system and what's around you. And in this case, where we are in the file system corresponds to where, to this file explorer. So I am in a folder that has three files in it, and there are these three files. Um, I don't think you would use that very often. Um, it is It could be handy, so um, I tend to like to know where I'm at. So I wanted to teach you that one. And the other one um, is clear, OK? This output um, window is going to fill up. And sometimes you just want to start at the top. I'm also going to get rid of this annoying message. I don't think you're ever going to have to um, install any packages. So um, don't worry about their um, package or plugin. OK, so um, here, if I want to run index.js, OK, I can simply type, and I had to I had to click in there. After I cleared, I had to actually click in that shell window again before I could type in it. I use the word node because this is a Node.js environment. So node is just the command for executing code. Okay. Now I get the same output I would get from the run command, but I get it here in the shell window. So everything's right here together. Okay. If I do node sample, one.js, okay, I run the code from here, okay, and you'll note I don't have to have the file up in the editor, for example, I don't have to have sample2.js up in this edit window in order to execute its code, um, so it's just save you a couple of clicks there. Um, if I just type sample1.js, I get an error from the command line. If I type node stample1.js, I get a different scarier message from the, from the command line, okay? So clearly, in order to be successful in this environment, you have to be able to type node space and then the accurate file name. And that's really all that's required of you at the Linux command line at this point. So um, what you're gonna do is you're going to be adding more JS files. You're going to change the name of this as you always do. You're going to be adding new JS files. And then when you're testing your code, instead of sample one and sample two, which you can either leave in there or you can get rid of, I don't care. Um, you're going to be running whatever, oh, not run, node. <laughs> See, it's, it's easy to make mistakes. OK, you're going to be running using Node to execute the JavaScript that you've written. Uh, and remember, clear, you can get rid of a lot of cruft in that window, but you may need to click in that window again in order to be able to type your next command. And I think that's all you need for this week. Um, it's uh, the command line is a hugely useful tool. Consider this your first um, brush with greatness in terms of using the command line and understanding more about folders and files. But really, all of that is tangential. What you need to be able to do is write some code and execute the node command over here in the shell tab, not the console tab. Good luck with that.